I came to hip hop the end of 1983, beginning 84. Um, what happened was at the time, um, we, myself and my dad, we had like this bonding session, if you want to call it that, recording music videos at the time. Because, um, I mean, even though we were living in exile, there was a lot, a lot of progressive music programs that were happening at the time. Um, and also, at the time, also, I was a lover of music because my father just had a vast collection of records, you know, from Albus to, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire, you know. And um, what happened was we stumbled upon this video called Hey DJ by the World Cars Wrecking Crew. And in this video, there was a guy behind turntables, there was a guy spinning on his head, and there were images of graffiti art, and this guy was talking over a beat, and this was just something extremely different to me, and I was like, what is this? You know, and we recorded these videos, you know, I tried to emulate what they were doing, not really understanding what this was. And also, a couple of weeks after that, they pushed more images. I mean, like, Al Cool J's I'm Bad video came through. You know, um, so all of these images of hip hop came through, and that was kind of my introduction into it. And being a kid at the time, you know, you're so egotistical. You think, oh, I've stumbled upon this gold. I'm the only guy that knows, you know, what's happening now. But a couple of blocks from me, there were kids that were doing exactly the same thing. One day, myself and my mom went to the town center, and we stumbled upon guys that just had broken down. The Dancing, you know, there were vinyls there, they were spinning on their heads, they were windmilling, and you know, there was like this whole world that just opened in front of me, and that's how I got into hip hop. The way I got into DJing was I always wanted to be a DJ, but unfortunately, equipment was expensive and also messed up my mother's hi fi systems. I started out as a dancer, a beatboxer, and a rapper. And you know, at the time also my personality is not like out there, that thing. So DJ was kind of the element that really suited my personality outside. Also because I love music as well. Um, and then, you know, seeing, seeing Rainy D for the first time doing what I wanted to do live. Because at the time, you got music by Public Enemy, Run DMC, uh, Two Life Crew, all of these crews, and you hear the wiki wiki sound, but you don't know how it gets executed. You know, you know it's a guy behind the turntable that's catching, but you don't know and you haven't seen it live. So seeing Rini D do that for the first time for me, that was just like, this is what I really want to do. I like, want to do DJ. And at the end of 91, I would say, no, beginning 91, yeah, that is when I bought my first turntable and mixer and became a DJ, so to speak. I was stepping out of my rapping and b-boy persona. Um, I came into BVK at the end of 96, beginning 97. Um, I was asked by Mr. Fat and the really did to join the crew. I joined very reluctantly because at the time um, I was in another crew with EJ Von Lerick and John One at the time. We had a single called energy and we thought that, you know, we're going to grow this, this group, Neophytes. Um, but then POC also at the same time asked EJ Von Lerick to be part of POC because they had a tour lined up in Europe and uh, EJ did some shows with him and at that time it was like, okay, are you going to do this or not? You know, and Mr. Fat was very, very serious on me joining the crew, you know, I was very, very serious on that. And, um, I joined the crew um, after that, you know, as, as, as the DJ and then also afterwards um, became involved in the emceeing bits and also with the production as well, you know, selecting beats and stuff like that. Um, my experience with BVK, it was an extremely life-altering experience, I would say, you know, it contributed um, to my being as a human being and also as, a, as an artist, as a DJ, as a producer. Um, with the tours internationally and, and, and nationally that we did, you know, it, it, it's good to share your stories, I would say, and, and also hip hop as well, you know, and, and also to see that um, at the time what we were doing was such a revolutionary work, you know, groundbreaking work, um, that we didn't realize what, you know, our contribution was at the time, you know, only now looking back. So, 
on definitely on all levels of being, I would say, it definitely contributed to my life. But growing up as a teenager in Mitchell, Spain, I was a very inquisitive little kid, and whenever I had little, whenever I had questions, my parents would always refer me to the library, and I would spend my time there. And when hip hop came with all these black consciousness consciousness messages, you know, and um, it kind of just, I related to it basically, you know, um, and I wanted to find out what is this music all about. I wasn't at the time seriously pursuing music or hip hop at the time because I had other backup bands at the time, you know, um, but I would say just like going through high school, I always knew that, okay, cool, I want to be part of this in some shape, form or the other, you know, and it just all panned out, I would say, you know. So, at the, I would say at times, yes, maybe it's something that I chose, but sometimes it feels the other way, you know, that it's like this music chose me to be part of it, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.